Esty, the trad wife influencer that wears her pretty dresses and her makeup is flawless, hair is always styled, is asking the question, why is trad wife content blowing up suddenly? Keep in mind, this woman is 24 without kids. So older women who have lived the life and actually have kids are answering the question. And I am so here for it. And I am here for the comment section because the comment section is where the real deal comes out, where women are talking about how they gave 10 years to a marriage, how they gave 15 years to a marriage, how they gave two decades to a marriage, and then how their man left, leaves them, and then they have to start over, and how they're in poverty. The poverty the poverty pipeline, the trad wife to poverty pipeline is real, and there's no two ways about it. You have these trad wife influencers that come on, they're showing the pretty dresses, they're showing their exquisite makeup, but that is not reality for most people. Those trad wife influencers are making money and have some protections. Real trad wives have given up and sacrificed everything for their children and their family. They have big chunks of time where they haven't spent building up their retirement, having any kind of bank account, and have no nothing for survival. So I have gone through the comment sections, and I'm going to talk about what other women have gone through. Why is trad wife content suddenly blowing up? It's become a popular topic because women my age and older that have gotten divorced and thrown decades of their lives down the toilet, doing the laundry and dishes, they're trying to warn you. You and accounts like you are intentionally dancing around the point. We're trying to tell you why this content is harmful. And I sincerely hope that you listen. You are not a traditional wife. You are on the internet and you work. Those of us who are actual stay-at-home moms that were traditional wives and mothers, we didn't have that luxury no 401k in our names. The difference between you and the people that you're trying to make content for, if it's even women at all, which I kind of doubt, is that they are actual stay-at-home traditional wives and you are, you're not a trad wife. You make money on the internet and they don't. If they find themselves a single mom with no 401k and decades missing from their resume with no current skills, no money in the bank, and not even a car in the driveway, their outcome is going to be quite different than yours with you making money from content. For the 12 years that I was a stay-at-home mother, not working at all, I became completely irrelevant in my field of information technology. The technology advanced and I and my skills did not. I didn't pay into social security for those years, so there's 12 years missing there, and my prospects in the actual W-2 job market looked like this, working in an insurance or IT call center making not enough money to be able to feed my children. What if your husband dies? The other thing that you're not addressing here is the fact that this is what makes it quite tone deaf. Many families right now have to have two income households. And when you tell them it's better to be a stay at home mom and show them all the glamor behind it and how wonderful it can be for your children, your husband, your marriage, you're reminding them they can't afford it. One of the particular things that I take issue with in your content is the way that you tell women what to wear. And you even double down on it and say that your daughter will not be able to wear leggings and you hope in so many words that your son would want to choose a woman who dresses like a lady. Content like this sets us back about 50 years. There might come a day, Este, if you have children, where you're home with three under three. Little Timmy is sick, the baby's got colic, the toddler finger painted all over the walls, you haven't showered yet, dinner is burning, so you're considering dominoes and you're going to look back on these days and these content if you don't hire help and you are going to shake your head because my dear you don't know what you're talking about and i say this with love there will come a day where he will come home from work and the house will not be clean dinner will not be homemade and you will not be wearing that dress if 2020 showed us anything it showed us what can happen when an entire family is an illness and what happens to mom i can tell you i did not rest all of our children needed to be fed, dishes needed to be done, my kids needed clean underwear, messes needed to be fixed, and I can assure you, no matter how glamorous I look on camera, those were some rough days. When I was six months pregnant with my, my first son, I got walking pneumonia. He tried to look nice during that pregnancy, but there was really no way. And my second son, I had hypermesis gravidarium. I'm not sure if you know what the feeling of being belly out pregnant 
hurling all over the toilet four to eight times per day would look like, but I'm assuring you it's not going to look like that. The raw and honest experience of motherhood was standing in a shower the night of my C-section, staples in, gauze around me, and all I wanted was a shower. Skin hanging and sagging, my feet so swollen from the spinal that I looked like I had dinosaur feet. Well, my husband kindly washed my hair for me because it's all that I wanted. When you get older and if you have children, you might start to understand that the most beautiful parts about having a family and motherhood and womanhood in general are the parts indeed that are not aesthetically beautiful. That if you build your bond with your spouse based on what you look like and being presentable and what you can give him at all times and the appearance, you're shortchanging yourself. Some of the most beautiful women that I know have been cheated on by their husband that to me look beautiful at all times and put together. So as a woman of experience, I can also tell you as an older woman that the women that I've known in my life that make such a big deal out of having a perfect and beautiful marriage are generally the ones whose marriages are the most messed up. You just, they don't talk about it. It's like they're trying to convince themselves that things are going well when they're not. You base your marriage on how beautiful you look at all times. Not about what happens if he doesn't find you beautiful like that anymore and attractive. Because right now, without a backup plan, without a job, completely submitting yourself to this man with no other anything, this advice that you're giving people, you're basically telling them that their ability to eat and take care of their own children will be based on whether he still loves you tomorrow. Good luck. Jenna says, everything you said is spot on, seven years out of my divorce and trad wife experience, and I'm still picking up the pieces of my life, just graduated with my bachelor's degree. This person says, just four years staying home, and now I'm a single mom who has to start at entry level, even with my degree. This person, Adele, says, yep, happened to me, stay-at-home mom for 15 years, divorced for seven years now, took a long while to overcome the damage. Almost a lady says, after 11 years of helping him build an empire, I had nothing, all in his name. This person says, I'm starting over on minimum wage with four kids. Cassandra says, literally all of this is 1,000% true. Motherhood is not what we originally thought it would be like. The reality is very harsh and exhausting. Y'all should know that I love this creator, Jenny. She is at Life Takes Two, and she's been sharing her story for a while. And she's sharing this because this is literally how she makes money. She was a trad wife for 24 years, and like she literally has the experience, has the souvenirs to show for it. But these 20-some-odd-year-olds think that they could come in and tell these older women, myself included, a thing about life and we've already been there and all of us get older <laughs> and then once you add kids on top of it kids are wonderful I love my children but staying out of the workforce to care for your children leaves a gap in time like I said I love her comment section because it's popular the women come out they tell their experience I got this super cute comment from someone who I assume is maybe a baby trad wife in training type of situation. First of all, it makes me realize that in my comment sections, I'm seeing a lot of like the baby trads versus the old burnt out hags like myself. I'm turning 50 this year. And really it's a battle over the financial futures of females. So here we go. Let the trad wars begin. She says, hmm, 20 something and living in a penthouse, food for thought. This is me when I was 20, in what I like to call my ignorant naivete era. Back when my trad husband was making so much money that we couldn't even spend it fast enough. We had the houses and the boats and the RVs and the vacations in Hawaii. Like, hey honey, what are you doing this weekend? Do you want to go to Maui? Sure, babe. Let me pack my one-piece modest swimsuit and I'll meet you there. And literally, we spent summers in Maui just for kicks. I would watch the sunset over Molokai from a clawfoot tub with my pretty pink nails sparkling in the sunset. I had friends who weren't trad wives, who just went to college and got jobs, and they lived in these pathetic little track homes, and they drove like Toyota Tercels, while Jake was buying me BMWs and Lincolns for my birthday. And I felt sorry for them. 
I kind of look down my little privileged nose at their working class pathetic lives. I would make sure that my big diamond ring flashed extra sparkly in the target fluorescent lights as I pushed my cart full of crap down the aisles, trying to fill my soul up with happiness. Anyway, I'm in a funny mood today, guys. And then the shit hit the fan when we had baby number five, and I ended up with an ovarian tumor that would literally kill me for a few moments. And during this, um, let's call this my fighting for my life phase at age 36, my husband decided he didn't give a shit about me. I had at the time five beautiful children, no college degree, no work experience, no credit of my own, nothing in my name. Didn't even really know how to turn on a computer, balance a checkbook, or do anything. He'd always done that for me. And here's a really sad story from this era. A friend of mine, hoping that she could kind of help me out with my health stuff, introduced me to a Mormon multi-level marketing essential oils company. And I signed up, bought some of the supplements and shit, and did a little class. And all of a sudden one day, I got a $76 check in the mail. By this point, I had been in and out of the hospital for three years. I could not count on even being out of bed every day. I was having nonstop seizures. The ambulance drivers all knew me by name. And all of a sudden, like the sun breaking through the clouds, I had this little $75 check and I thought to myself, here's a way that I can actually make a little bit of money from my house. Like I can be sick, I can be whatever, and my friends can come over and they can buy the oils. And I started formulating this plan. I kind of did the math on stuff. I looked at apartments in the area. I kind of figured out like what my grocery bills were and things like that. And I thought to myself, if I can get up to like $2,300 a month, I can leave Jake. I don't have to be violently, brutally abused treated like a dog. For $2,300 a month, I can be safe. I will never again be caught behind a giant, uh, what was it, hickory door and have my tiny little body shoved up against a wall repeatedly by an angry man who wanted me to die. $2,300 a month was my goal. That's all it would take for me to escape. Here's the sad thing. When I finally got up to like a $400 check and then a $900 check, Jake started to notice and put his name on my essential oils MLM account and the money started going into his account. And I would spend 13 more years living in those million dollar homes with a madman. The number one predisposer to domestic violence is financial dependence. No adult human being should ever be financially dependent on an adult human being. Maybe that worked for your grandma and grandpa, but it doesn't work for some people. And you don't know if you're one of those. A man is just simply not a financial plan. A man can be your best friend. He can be your fiance, your boyfriend, your lover, your husband, whatever you want him to be. But he is not your meal ticket to the penthouse or whatever that thing is for you. And while I hear from followers all over the place about stories similar to mine with women who are like, I was married to a Jake too. That's not even sad to me. I expect that. What's really sad is the stories from people who are like, I thought I had the perfect marriage. I was happy. I thought he was happy. Here I am at age 30, 40, 50, 60, whatever. And even the nice husband left me with nothing. Even if Jake had paid me alimony and child support in full, which he did not, that would have gotten me through five years at $2,100 a month. That's below the poverty level for the number of children that I had. He abandoned me for the 19-year-old escort when I was 44 years old. So by 49, which is the age that I am right now, all of that would have stopped anyway. And then I have more than half of my life with no college education, no work experience, no way to make money for myself, trying to compete with 20 year olds in a job market where employers don't necessarily want to hire a grandma. No retirement, no savings, no life insurance, no nothing. There was no way in the world for me not to be screwed. Super excited to hear your response, babe. Why is trad wife content suddenly blowing up? Because people my age, that were traditional wives are getting divorced and realize that they threw 20 years 
of optional, available, could have been energy into the workforce, into their future. They threw that away doing laundry and watching their kids. Now, don't get me wrong. I wouldn't trade staying home with my children for anything. However, I would have insisted on some sort of investment into my future, either by way of a 401k, an IRA, a home in my name, or I would have had to have some sort of side gig where I could have put that on a resume if anything happened to my husband or our marriage. And so people my age, women that are in their 40s and 50s that have raised their children who have been traditional wives are coming forward and talking about the realities of that. Because someone like my grandmother, who couldn't have left her husband no matter what, because she went from high school and her parents into being a stay-at-home wife and mother, she could never have left, ever. And so I, being 51, I am like one of the first or second generations of women being traditional stay-at-home wives who are coming out and saying, don't do this to yourself. And so trad wife content is becoming super popular right now because what's happening is the trad wife is glamorizing staying home and being a homemaker and a stay-at-home mother, which again, there's nothing wrong with that as long as you talk about the fact that if your husband dies, you're screwed, like triple-double screwed. I have a family member that if her husband died or left her tomorrow, she would be a stay-at-home wife broke on her ass with four kids and no way to support herself or if he died she's completely screwed and for all of you out there that say just marry a really good man that's great and all but what if you're sick of this really great man what if he dies what if he becomes like incapable of going to work It's not that trad wife content is extremely popular right now. Everyone's being mean. What's happening is is that we are the second generation of women coming forward to say, quit being so goddamn stupid and protect yourself. 50% of marriages end in divorce. And while he's making a hundred plus thousand dollars a year, you have no skills, no career, no resume, nothing except for kids and a dog and God knows what else. You'd be living in an apartment while he's got his new 20-something in his penthouse or the family home. So good luck. Listen, there's a lot of people in my life who think that I am an absolute party pooper because when I see young couples getting married instead of just saying congratulations, I have to sit down and talk about financial autonomy and making sure that the female is supported in the relationship as much as the male is and how are you going to co-raise those children together and what's the exit strategy and that's not a particularly romantic thing to ask a young couple when they're about to tie the knot but I really wish that somebody had had those conversations with me when I was 20 years old I got married to a smoking hot Mormon return missionary and he promised to love me forever not just till death to his part for time and all of eternity And he was a liar, but I didn't know that when I was 20. So I dropped out of college and gave up my job and had the babies and stayed home for 24 years of my life. And if you're new to me and you don't know what happened, at age 44, about six years ago today, I caught him picking up a 19-year-old escort. How do I know she's 19? Because that's what he had typed into the Google search. 19-year-old escort Phoenix before he chatted with somebody on, I think it was Backpage, arranged a meetup, which uh, I had caught on his phone and followed him up there the next night. Two days after, my husband abandoned me and our four kids for a 19-year-old escort. I went to Trader Joe's to buy myself a bag of groceries, swiped my card, and it was declined. I should have had a ton of money in that account, and it was all gone. It was gone. My name had never been on one of our homes. My name hadn't been on our vehicles. My name wasn't on the Mercedes that I was driving at the time that our marriage ended. He was able to evict me from the condo that we were renting together because I didn't even exist on the lease, not even as a roommate, not even as a pet. He just canceled the lease. I was just some weirdo living in the condo that Jake had canceled and so the apartment evicted me. 
I'd always kind of thought in my head too, like being a homemaker gives me a lot of skills that I bet would translate into a job. So I right away like put together a resume, talked about all of the work that I had done in our family businesses and went out and started interviewing for jobs. And there was not a person in this entire fucking world who wanted to hire a 44, 45, 46 year old who had been a stay at home mom since the time she was 20. So my first and actually only job that I had after my divorce was $11 an hour working as an assistant in an elementary school classroom four hours a day. If you did the math, $44 a day. The only reason that my rent is paid this month is, first of all, my TikTok followers are constantly supporting my content. And I have three separate jobs. Sales job, furniture flipping business, and I'm still working my Mormon essential oils MLM. I work seven days a week. I have no retirement. I live in a family member's guest house that they could sell at any moment. I've only existed in the credit world for about four years, so I can't finance anything. And it just kind of pisses me off that I went into my marriage thinking that I had a 100% success rate. I didn't have an exit strategy. I didn't have any way to support myself if things went south. And here I am. So I've been living this out on camera for the past three years and I don't plan to go anywhere. I'll keep you posted. Let's see how it ends. Would have been better if I had made different decisions in the beginning and I wish that somebody had told 20 year old me that a man is not a plan. Never has been, never will be. So Audrey, I wanted to pull this one out, is the kid of a man who left. She says, after my dad left, my mom with four kids and no money, he took everything in the divorce and ran off with the 20 year old. My mom told me to get a degree and put my future before a man. Michelle says, same girl, I had zero desire to be a stay-at-home mom. After watching my mom struggle and plot and twist, he's gone, and I'm peacefully taking care of our kids with the career I had before him. So basically, moms, watching moms struggle is a reason why many of these children of stay-at-home moms won't do that. This person says, told my kiddo, continue with college, keep your last name with the hyphen, She's almost done with college and did this. She said, I was right. She's 25. This person says, same with my mom. I have a degree and career and make more money than my husband. Hell no, I'll never be in my mom's position. People are learning, but you got these trad wife influencers that come on here and they're super duper popular. They're pretty and they have influence. But that is not reality. That's cosplay versus reality of what happens and listening to what some of these children went through when their daddies left. Um, you know, that should solidify some things. But no, the pretty makeup and pretty dresses, that, that's more of a pull. All right. This person says, let's be for real. A trad wife is another way of saying a glorified domestic worker. Or a bane maid. You can call them a bane maid. You can call them a wife appliance or whatever. Um, and then this person says minus the security in money because you have no security. There's no money. There's no, you have a big gap in your work history. If you ever get any work history, you're in survival mode if anything ever happens. And what Jimmy says, a man is not a plan. A man is not a plan. You need to have a plan, B, C, D, E, F, G, elemental B, all of, all of the plans. CKB doesn't think that they will listen. She says they will not listen. They could listen because Shannon McCormick says, I'm listening. You never know. All she can do, all these women can do is keep putting out the content, telling about their lives and allowing the women in the comment section to tell about their lives. And people like me, I'm going to magnify it because Women need to be for real, have some survival instinct, not just for you, but for your children, because many of these women are stuck with these kids trying to figure it out because daddy can just pick himself up and implant himself over there and just leave these kids behind. This person says, when I hear trad wife, I always wonder, say the marriage doesn't fail. Once the kids are grown, what are they going to do to occupy their time? And, you know, some women do lose themselves in their children. So this is why it is best to have something of your own, a hobby, a part-time job, something. Don't just lose yourself. Carrie says, this is me. My husband did a 180 and claimed to have never wanted me to stay at home, resents me for our financial issues, 
I'm working full time at a low wage job and I'm in grad school. I'm 47. Please understand what in reality world we need two incomes. That's reality world. People can people can do this cosplay. Do the cosplay if you want to, but being 24 with no kids, this is not reality of what it's like to be a mother. <laughs> it, it's pretty. It makes for some good content, but this woman is making bank. She's making bank selling this lifestyle. She is selling a lifestyle, but she's not living it with the babies. She's just not. <laughs> This is not what motherhood looks like. This is cosplay, period. Anyways, jump into the comment section of a 40-some-odd-year ex-trad wife to get reality. Don't listen to a 20-some-odd-year-old without kids. That's cosplay. All right, let me know what you think. Don't forget to like, comment, and share.